Okay, so now it's time for deckling. Now, if you've watched uh, a show that I did this week talking textures, uh, you'll know what I'm on about now, okay? This is that thing where deckling is also important to do with the texture of your model. It's nothing even really to do with finish because you can have quite a flat finish or a glossy finish or a satin finish, but it needs to be smooth again. And this is the whole point to it. So you want it to be as smooth as you can possibly be. Now, in recent years, we've had various uh, items that are made and I've got a load of different ones up there, but my favorite sort of ones are these, which is Micro Set and Salt. They've got enzymes in there that actually soften the decal to help it to conform to the texture on your model, but it can only go so far. So if you've got something really rough and you're feeling it and it feels like quite like sandpaper, you're gonna have to do it. So what you could just do is literally grab yourself a sander, rub the area where that decal's gonna go, and then obviously clean it off with a bit of warm water and then put the decal onto it and then away you go. And then hopefully the enzymes, which are basically mild acids, break down the decal making it really soft and it can just conform and push down into all of the texture that's in there but really you don't want any like we said before if you've got it like a glass finish you will never get silvering and obviously silvering is the nemesis of any type of modeling one of the things that's changed though over the last few years is that literally carrier film and when we talk about carrier film this is the what the decal has been printed onto um, is that is a lot smaller whereas it used to be a huge big area um, and it'll go through and I can show you hopefully down in here some of the differences so if you catch this in the light the carrier that we're talking about if we catch it here is that you see up here this area looks quite square well obviously it's just got a few areas in this is the carrier film and obviously if you got air stuck under there it'd be a problem and you can see over on this one here we've got a little cut area and obviously catch it in the light you can see it's just a big rectangle whereas in theory it's just obviously four corners now don't get me wrong i prefer it being one big one than rather this being four areas to try and line them up would be an absolute nightmare but as you can probably see over here on the actual round door itself in the old days it would probably come out to where my fingernail is it would be a good couple of mil over the top. So you'd always have to either trim that off or go through. But modern, if you look up here now on the actual uh, the flags over here, you can actually see how tight they are to the edge. So that's not really a problem. And obviously, if you go round, and that's when I do my reviews, if you see them, I'm trying to show when I do this look, is to show you how they are as in solid, but also how little carrier the film is in there. And again, walkway strips, these ones down in here, they used to be really big, thick areas and things, but you can probably see now they're very, very thin again. But still preparation, like we said, with everything in modeling going from basically primer right the way through to your final one, it's all about that surface and the texture onto it. So if you're rubbing your finger over it and you're thinking, do you know what, that feels like sandpaper, you've got a couple of options. You can either just give it, again, a go with a polishing stick and try and take some of that edge off to it or re-gloss it couple of coats of gloss let it totally go off and away you go now underside on here is still a little bit not rough but I would say it's a nice satin finish to it so this would be the problem but good thing for us is there's hardly anything on the bottom in here as in you know basically large decals with silvering problems lots of small ones but they should conform no problem at all so really simple tools for this job a couple of clean brushes so what I tend to have is a medium, a small, and a large brush. Again, it's one of these things, just make sure there's no clean, there's no paint onto them, definitely no oils and things like that, which can affect everything like that. So you're gonna need those. You're gonna need some scissors. To be honest, got my normal orange scissors for this, but I have also got a very posh pair of Tamiya decal scissors. So these are absolutely great for cutting carrier film off and things like that. So we got those. Tweezers, always dead handy. In case it goes wrong, you can peel it apart, get underneath and get it off and move it. So they're fantastic. Cotton buds, again, cotton buds, it's an old fashioned thing, but it just, there's nothing better. You're rolling out the water, you can get rid of it and obviously soak any excess water up onto there right the way through. And then usual thing, a couple of paper towels. So I've just got down it here from Kitchen Roll, great for dabbing, mopping up, getting rid of too much water, so forth and so on. Aftermarket you things for this, obviously, as we were saying before, there's lots of other ones on the market, but these are my chosen two. So what we've got down in here is Micro Set and Soul. Not to get confused, because you would think that perhaps Set is the last one on, and perhaps Soul is the first one. No, it's the other way around. So the blue one, it's basically a mild acid. If you smell it, it'll smell like vinegar. What this will do is soften the decal. Some people put it into the water beforehand. Some people put it actually onto the surface of the model before they put the decal down onto it. 
personal choice. Depending on how well the decals are going down, I won't always use it. So sometimes I don't even use set. If it's a thicker decal, Tamiya, things like that, I tend to put this into the water before I use it and all the rest of it. Soul is the one which when your decal is down and you're happy and you're not gonna to touch it again, it's in the right position and you haven't got to put another one on to make up a multi-decal, things like that, then you put that over the top. This one will then basically eat into the decal and weld it down onto the surface. Again, no fit wrong with both of those. Again, there's lots of other ones out there. I've got Hyper Soul up there. I've got uh, Gun Stuff. Yeah, it goes on and on. Deco do some really good ones as well, setting solutions for it. And that's really just what you're after, a decal set uh, setting solution. Water. I'm a little bit different to everybody else because I do this. I know some people have jugs and they have warmers and various things. I put mine straight onto the cutting mat like this. It's at room temperature, this water. I used to use warm water and it had to be this, that and the other. I think I'm getting old because now I just put it straight forward onto the cutting mat like it. If you wanted to, you could add a drop or two of micro set and sole into this. This is my palette now for working. The reason for having it down here is when we cut the decal off of here and we put it on, it keeps it flat. And then what you can do is just drag it off to the cutting mat and it acts a little bit like a wet palette. It keeps it moist and ready to go, but it doesn't float off and disappear and you don't know which part you're doing so forth and so on. So that's what I tend to do on there as I'm working onto this one. How you go about putting them down is personal choice. I know some people put all of this lot on first. So this is our actual stencil sheet that we're doing here. And as you can see, it does go on for quite a bit. And again, some people will put every single last one on. Some people will put perhaps just the major ones on once they're on. Remember, there is a two different versions here. We've got A and B, depending on which version you're doing. We're doing version A here. So that's our stencil data for that one. Again, good idea, grab yourself a pen as you put them down tick them off and away you go once you've got those down then most people might then put the other ones on and for this to be honest it's really straightforward you've only got a handful so we've got the roundel which is going to go on top of the port wing we've got the tail code and obviously the tail flash going on we've got the roundel down the side of the cockpit as well and then from our point of view underneath here we've got another one just for the access door for going up underneath so that's really the major ones they're the ones you see the others you don't see. So again, familiarize yourself with the actual sheet, work out exactly which ones you're doing, which versions, obviously for us, we're not doing bombs or anything just down in here, but we are doing blue steel, so that's slightly separate. But from our point of view, what we're really doing is these ones at the top. So what you can do is grab yourself your scissors and just save yourself a little bit of a thing of working things out because we're not doing the anti-flash one. The anti-flash is in the sort of low viz. So we're just doing these ones along here. So just being careful not to cut off any others. And then we've got these ones over here, which are the ones on top here. And this are general ones as well. And I do believe that this particular colored dots on here is something to do with the RAM system onto it. So these ones as well. And again, I know some people talk about these should be black because in some photos they're showing as black. In other times they're actually this color pass your decision is yours for that one so what you can do then is basically familiarize yourself for what we got down in here so we've got some no step areas we've got some of these up here which is technically crew access and emergency access things like that and the other one so again just have a look around work them out i wouldn't stick all of this down in here and away we go i'll break it up into sections just grab perhaps 10 or 20 at a time for all the ones we need and obviously we've got lots of hook little symbols down in here for lifting points so again you could just cut all of them out do them all because they're all the same and then just work your way around putting them around absolutely everywhere as you go through so usual thing if i just put the wing one on to show you then i'll get on and do all the others off camera because it's a, a bit of a bore so if we just talk about doing these ones first so we'll just pop this in and again think about how you're gonna handle your model so for me when i do it obviously it's a big lump i'll probably handle the wing so what i might do is end up doing the other wing just the top that'll be one mission perhaps you might do that section in an evening perhaps you'll do the underside all in one right the way over just put it down like this and just work your way around as par in and then do it but what i wouldn't do is obviously one area and then straight away be holding onto it because the warmth from your hand and if the decal hasn't adhered properly and stuck down you could do that thing of like you go off and then you look at your hand and you've got bits all over it 
that's decals and that's happened to me as well. Or I might think, well look, I'll always hold it by the nose. So I'm not gonna put anything on the actual nose section. I'll do all the other areas because I can pick it up and move it, I'll do it here. Then I'll leave it for a good couple of hours and then I can come back, hold onto this wing. Once I've gone off, put the nose ones on and all the rest of it we're good to go to then go over, see all those in or whichever way you want to go with it. So just have a little bit of a think about how you're gonna go about handling it right the way through. So if we just do the good old fashioned round or we come along and we're just gonna put it face down into the water just like that. Come along with your brush, just dunk it down. And all we're going to do is rub up a little bit of water the big thing is, as you can see, it keeps it flat. By doing it this way, it's got it flat in the water. It doesn't curl up, it doesn't roll up. Sometimes if decals crack, if they split, if they come apart, it can be purely because they've rolled up and they've actually not been able to slide across the curve and then they just break. Once it's been in there a while, you can flip it over and just re-wet it and we just let it sit in there just like this. Now hopefully we won't have a problem, but what you can do if you're not sure about that decal as well, use one of the ones you're not gonna use. So don't use the one you've just done the camo. In theory, I should have grabbed another one of these low vis ones and used it on here. Check it, see how it adheres. Is it quite a thick decal? Does it come away really easy? Does it take a long time to separate? Just so you know what you're working with first. Again, this is me just being this because I'll keep that box. I might do the other version at some point. So uh, anyway, we just pop this down. And again, I'm hopeful because these are the newer decals will be fine. So automatically I'll get my brush underneath here dab your finger in the water before you place it on the decal and it moves. The reason for dabbing it as well, if you've got anything on your finger and you dab it onto the decal, it might stick to your finger. So again, by dabbing water first, but you can see that is sliding on there, no problem at all. And then what I do is I just push them off. So now it can sit there for hours because it's still in a little bit of water down in here, but it's not going to be enough to obviously, one, let it float away because there's not enough water there now, but also it won't let it dry out. So you've got now hours of working time to put this down and on. So taking your model, and obviously we'll just pop it around this way so we can get it all in in one. Again, we've got our, let's move this around here a little bit so we can see it. Again, this here he is, he's just here. So taking your instructions, have a look to see how this lines up. And the great thing about the Vulcan is it's got panel lines all over it. And we can see that technically this is supposed to run in between the little curve here, the curve here, but also it starts on that first panel line as it comes back onto this. So then what we can do, we take just a little bit of the water, we're gonna come around to that general area just down in here, and we're gonna put some water. The water is just enable it to slide once it's in position. And then what you can do, you can take your decal, place it over the area where you want it to be and then you can literally slide it out and this is where you can use your tweezers and you can grab the backing paper out of the way and then you can say to yourself how is it going to go down in here so we know it runs roughly to this panel line and we've got these other ones in here and again my markings aren't exact for what we've got down on here but that's not a problem because they'll all be slightly different we can see how it sort of goes in with the rest of it and i think it's about there so what we've done is this first panel line it's up to that edge there's another panel line down here to the rear and it's about halfway through that's exactly where it is also showing on our instructions even though the camo pattern is slightly different it's actually showing it in the same area as we've got it just down in here. So I'm just going to nudge it a little bit more up. And I'm just thinking as it just touches that front panel line and it is down into there. The gap looks about right to the side. We're all in there. So what you can do, you can take your cotton bud, pop it away from it and soak up some of the excess water that's around it first because that will preload this up. And then all you're going to do is place the cotton bud on the top and lightly to start with, just run it over the top. And all you're doing is picking up some of the, the moisture onto there. Then you can hold down the decal and we can start to roll it across the entire decal. And then once you start to pick up, we're just going to turn this over now. And we're just in the middle and we're just pushing to the outsides. So all you're trying to do really is squirt the water out the sides and on big decals like this this is where your kitchen roll comes in you can just take the kitchen roll and place in and then just push it to the outsides 
take away all the excess water and that is on there just like that so when you look at it there's no lumps or bumps underneath this it's all quite nice as it sits in here and again it's not adhering to the panel lines it's not like you know you've got the panel lines going through that will come later so all we're going to do is do the setting solution we'll draft that brush a second and then we're going to take some of the setting solution and we're going to go in the inside and we're just going to put it right the way around and then slightly over the edge what this will do is draw out the water as well and you just want a nice even coat right the way over the entire decal and leave it patience comes in what you're hoping for is for this to start to wrinkle and don't panic if it literally wrinkles up if it wrinkles up that's the best thing it could happen it means the actual enzymes in your setting solutions are working really well with your decal and then hopefully it's going to then pull it all right down and you might be in a situation where you need one coat and that's it if nothing seems to happen don't worry about it let it completely dry off so you can't see any moisture on this anymore then give it a second coat and then perhaps a third and then hopefully what you'll start to see it going into the panel lines a little bit then what we'll do is once it's dried off we're going to come along with a knife and we're going to cut into those grooves of the panel line and you can do the same if you had riveting and things like that just to so it's gone in there properly into it and we'll give it another coat and then it will bond to the insides of those panel lines purely when we come along with a wash and weathering it interacts with the decal like it would do with the surface so for instance if you've got like a panel line coming along if you haven't cut that what will happen is the wash won't go into the panel line it will stop at the decal and then reappear on the other side and that's the trouble if you've got prob uh, problems with big clear the actual carrier fill big clear areas that the panel line just stops and then appears again where in theory you want it to run right the way through doesn't matter if there's writing there warning symbols insignias things like that you want it to go right the way through as it would in real life that's literally just starting to wrinkle slightly on the outside and you can probably see the panel lines are starting to poke through just a little bit in there you can see it's starting to just to wrinkle up just a little bit that's exactly what we want but you can see where these panel lines areas it's actually interacting with it so what we're hopeful is we won't even have to cut it if those all sink into it, it would be fine but you can see how it's puckering up that's good that means it's actually working really well with the actual micro sole so hopefully we just need a couple of coats but it's working really really well now so there we go that's it rinse and repeat about a couple hundred times and you have it all decalled and then what we'll do is we're going to seal this all in with a nice heavy flat to satin coat just so the weathering's got something to bite to so we can get the weathering all over it and then what we'll do is put a final sort of very gloss coat almost over it to bring back this type of shiny effect like the real vulcan's got okay so decals have all been on now for around about 20 four hours on this one so we can have a good look round and see exactly what we got off the bat doesn't look too bad at all so we have got just the odd little thing so you can probably see just down in here on the round all the panel lines follow through but it's a couple of little areas it doesn't do exactly brilliantly so what you can do is you can just pop along with a blade put the blade knife in there and just drag it through the panel line and then again through each one in turn and what this will do is just it will help it conform a little bit better but just make sure you're in that panel line and then just pull it through then what you can do you can grab a little bit of your setting solution again so we just get a little bit more on a brush and then we can just put down a nice thin coat and then hopefully it will conform in there so the way this one actually worked was is that i put down that initial one which you saw then we've gone around and then just put another two or three coats onto this one over the case of the last sort of 24 hours so literally over a couple of hours come in have a look at it it's all dried back it looks like it's dry and everything else then you can put another coat on but a little bit like airbrush and don't just keep topping up when it's wet because you're not going to do anything you need it to dry and to conform and to bite down then you go in again so forth and so on but if you look down on here you can see can't replace ball we've got a little bit of silver in and it's not very happy it's one of these things you catch it in the light it goes but obviously we have got it so quick little tip for you if you have got a uh, riveting wheel so we've got one down this is just a one mil but any of them do don't you know i know this is obviously a rosie the riveter but if you've got any type of riveting wheel what you can do is there's two ways of doing it you can either do it technically dry as i call it so you just come along like this you pop your riveting wheel on top 
and you just give it a light rub right the way. We're not trying to rivet it, we're just literally just trying to put the panel, the actual pins to pierce the carrier film. So you can just give it a light rub around right the way over Then we take our setting solution and then what happened is now the setting solution can get underneath this and give it a generous amount right over and now it's getting in there you can see it's already got in there what happened is that will all bubble up and it will allow them that air out it allows the setting solution to get underneath it and as that evaporates it pulls it down and flattens it out just like that and that's literally what we're trying to do so again checking on the other side we've got a little bit of the panel line not going right the way across so again we're just going to pop the blade in the groove and we're just going to run it right the way through and then same thing we're just going to grab a little bit of setting solution and work it somewhat into it and again to be honest on this side we're okay I haven't actually got any problems down in there but we need that one to go in we have done obviously the tail as well so you want to check for any silvering in there and we don't really have any on that side so we're happy and um, we can just check the other side and we don't have any on the other side either so that was quite lucky on the underside you might imagine we've gone right the way around all of these under here as well and uh, no problems it's very very fine to see them but shake them in the light you know twist them over to one side and all the rest of it and we're absolutely fine the only thing we have got is a little bit just around here and again this is one of those ones where it's a difficult thing to conform round, but uh, it might need a little bit just to get that to, to go in but what we can actually do is we can just do a little bit of cut just to lightly and again don't hack through it but we're just trying to lightly go around it like that just to help that bed down in there and again just double checking around on any of them put them on the side catch them in the light so that way you can see the silvering so forth and so on the only thing we've done is these we've used the kit ones why i don't know because they all look black on a lot of them but i'm trusting airfix airfix never get things wrong anyway that's all in there like that so now we're happy with those parts we also did obviously as we said before we got the gear done and we have got some little decals to go on the wheels but to be honest with you we're going to use a pen because i can't be sort of messing around with that so down in here we've got a posca pen and all they are is they look like white little lumps so you can actually just come along with your pen and if we grab our magnifiers there you go so we can just pop this in here and what they've got is little white tabs so if you look at the uh, the instructions it just shows you with these little white tabs coming off of here so we can do the same with a pen so we can just put these in like that and to be honest trying to put the decal and get it to conform and all the rest of it is a little bit of a nightmare so doing it this way is ideal so that puts those in there just like that and we'll do exactly the same on the other ones as well and they are all ready for fitting all right so we're getting pretty much there there's obviously lots of lumps and bumps still to go on this one but until it's on its gear uh and obviously we finish with the weathering i don't want to do it purely because pitot tubes on the front hand i grab this thing you know all the time usually by the front we'll snap them off especially with the other ones down the spine and bits and pieces like that i will probably break them and things so we don't want to risk like that so for the moment they are going to go on absolutely last so when we're happy that all of these are drying in as you can see this one's dried in already and it's conformed pretty much beautifully maybe a little ones on the back there need a little bit longer but what you want to do leave it for a good couple of hours totally dry off once you're happy that there is nothing else on here that's going to give you any problems there's no silvering and all the rest of it then we can actually get a satin finish on this one so the satin finish is my favorite i use it all the time for this one is this so it's a little bit of xf85 mine does look, look a bit like a sample because if you've got lacquer thinners in it you can probably see it actually if i open the top you'll probably see it you can see it goes yellowy don't worry about it you don't see it it's just because it's got lacquer thinners in it and that's what happens so what we're going to do give this a good mix up let them dry get them over in the spray booth and then we're going to give this a satin finish now the whole point of giving this a satin finish is just to knock it back a little bit but also it's to give texture so the weathering in our case we're going to come along with a clay wash it's got something to grip onto because we don't want it to be just a panel line wash we want it to look somewhat grimy so again we can use a different couple of techniques with this one sanding it off 
dry wiping, things like that right the way through just to give it that effect. But again, we've talked about texture on a recent video. There's no point having this glossy because nothing's going to stick. We want a little bit of bite on there for it to grip onto. So by giving it a satin finish, hopefully that will be exactly the type of texture we need. Right, okay, so what we'll do is we'll just show you down in here and say don't worry about if your uh, mixture looks a bit like a sample because mine does too. So what we're going to do, we're going to need quite a bit. We've got a big aircraft down in here. So as you can see, it looks a little bit horrible. Uh, and it does look like a sample. They all do it. I wouldn't worry about it. To be honest, other manufacturers such as Hatakas looks like this from New. Again, what we're doing is about 50-50 mix. So technically, this is a flat finish going in here. But we're going to do it like a bit of a satin. So to get that effect, what we're going to do is add a little bit more thinners than... You would normally so that's now got around about sort of 65 percent thinners into that and then we'll just get this a bit of a mix just down in there so now it looks like a proper dodgy sample although i'm sure if you took that in you might get a funny look again what we want to do is make sure your airbrush is running totally clear so if you're like me and you might have sprayed some i don't know silver through it at the weekends you might need to just make sure that that's blowing clear so what you want to do is basically put it down put few mils through it, it's its last gasp. When it does that last gasp, if that's suddenly got something in there, then it's time to really clean out your airbrush because you need to. So what we're going to do, we're going to pour our mix into here. So we're going to put just over half of our mix down in here, pop the top on. Okay, then what we're going to do is we're going to spray this at a very high air pressure because again we want it to have a nice bit of texture for it to grip onto. All right, so that's pretty good. And we want to put quite a bit coming out. There's a reason for this. So normally this would give you a flat finish, but we're going to be quite close to it. And we're going to give it quite a, a wet look. Again, I'll try and show you this as best I can. It's a bit of a beast to try and fit in here. All right, so what we we'll do is we'll do up here. So when we're spraying this down, we're literally going to be going so it looks wet. So it's got a nice wet look to it. Hopefully you can see that. So we're not putting it down like hairy fairy from a distance and all the rest of it. So when this dries back, it will dry back to a really satin type look to it. And that's the plan for it. So I'm going to get a little bit whiffy in here and everything else. So safety first, on goes the respirator. And then we'll hit the extractors and we'll give it a good coat. Okay, so hopefully you can see that's got a really nice satin look to it. It's still got a bordering on glossy, but it's got a little bit of bite in that. So that's exactly what we want to have, a nice sort of satin finish to it. 
and again it's one of those ones where you can if you go a little bit and it looks a little bit dry you can just actually make up a little bit of gloss and just pop that over the top to give you a more satin look all right but that's the top side done again you'll know what it's just like it doesn't take very long to dry at all but also hopefully you can see these decals now they look the same as in when you look across they don't look flatter and they don't look obviously glossier than the paintwork around it and that's what you want to do it's called blending we're just blending the surface in all to be the same so when we come in with weathering in a moment it will look absolutely fantastic so hopefully you can see it's looking pretty spot on for what we wanted so what i'm going to do is we're going to flip this over in a second once it's touch dry i'll pop it onto its back and we do the white side and then we're going to leave it for 24 hours to go off and then tomorrow we'll give it a wash <laughs> 